May 2022 predictions video. So this is going to be a long one, similar to last time in April. I'm going to run through the astrology in chunks by date with the charts mentioned throughout rather than jumping from Bitcoin for the entire month, the US for the entire month. I'm going to do it chronologically, which does take a little more prep and bouncing around on my end, but should make a little bit more sense to follow. So if you prefer that, uh, make sure that you leave a comment down below. As always, like, subscribe if you do like and you would like to subscribe. I see that most of you are not subscribed, so be cool if some of you, it's my eyelash falling. I don't have, I don't have time for this shit. We have no extensions left, so I'm using falsies and I don't like it. Yet again, as always, the camera that I have with the cam link set up to connect just has this weird histogram and everything on it. I'm going to switch to my normal webcam. Let me know if that's not preferred, but I feel like this whole thing is, is just, it's just annoying. <laughs> back with the chin shot. Um, so anyway, we start out this month right after a solar eclipse. So for context, April 30th, we have a solar eclipse and solar eclipses are very destabilizing new beginnings, especially because this one is conjunct Uranus, the literal planet of instability and upheaval. So I expect that we will be recovering from the eclipse April 30th, so to speak, that there will be a reeling, a getting back on our feet kind of time with the solar eclipse in Taurus. I have a video in depth about it. I also have last month's video, so I will defer to that, but it's a very intense destabilizing new beginning around natural resources, supply lines, finance, data, things that are the foundations of building and life. And given that the moon will still remain in Taurus into May 1st, I think that the whole first few days of May is very eclipse energy as we lead into the eclipse May 15th. So the period between eclipses, also known as the dragon hole, I've heard it talked about as, is very surreal. I think of it similar to the period between Christmas and New Year's, where it's just a weird time where calendar time doesn't exist. People tend to have a, a myriad of like physical manifestations, even of the energy during this time. Um, it's very surreal, like I said, is the best way to describe it. And likely Bitcoin and ETH will still be down during this period. Um, now I'm going to jump to Trading View to illustrate that. But the last time that we had eclipses, uh, solar eclipses, excuse me, for Bitcoin were December 4th, 2021 and June 10th, 2021. Solar eclipses are new moons. Every solar eclipse is by definition a new moon. It's just when the sun, moon, and earth are aligned in such a way on the ecliptic that it is, it's, it's a giga new moon. It's very intense. So the last two times that this happened, as you can see, we dumped pretty significantly. We were still on a downtrend after each of them. Uh, Jupiter was in Pisces uh, and for the summer period, and then again in December, so we were leading through that. And now with the solar eclipse approaching on April 30th, we likely will be going up from now as I'm filming this on the 20th until that period uh, on the 30th and then early May we have a sharp sharp downtrend. Solar eclipses tend to be catalyst events that are destabilizing for the whole world let alone the market so I'm not optimistic leading into May. Now back to the astrology there are some nice things that are I wouldn't even say redeeming but aside from the solar eclipse for example Venus and Jupiter together in Pisces is dreamy. Venus and Jupiter are the two benefics or the life-giving planets and they're very close to Neptune. Very dreamy energy so with this new beginning that's a bit difficult a bit destabilizing and like people are saying you know this has positive aspects bitch I know but it's an eclipse by default which is I don't know in what world an eclipse is like oh that's a nice no it's even if it's for the best it's intense so let's just stop with the I don't know pretending it's not. Anyway, Venus, Jupiter, Neptune all together is actually pretty dreamy beginning of the month. It's a nice reminder that what we're working hard for and changing shit up for has a goal in the end. We see the goal. It's very beautiful. It's very dreamy, whatever. Um, and on the second, Venus enters Aries. Now, Venus in Aries in, is in its exile. Venus rules the opposite sign of Libra. So when Venus enters the sign opposite to that, it's known as being in a foreign country. It's antithesis. It's exile. It's like being in a foreign country. It's not bad it's just a little bit uncomfortable and weird venus is about unity and aries is about the self it's about uh being upfront. it's not about harmony it's about being like very uh impulsive so venus and aries i think of it as like um 
uh, no, no political statement here about feminism, you know, like, being very assertive for the feminine, Venus, um, I'm not bringing in any, I, I know when I say things like that, I get a myriad of responses, so I'm not talking about the application of it, I'm just talking about, yeah, what Venus and Aries often symbolizes, um, Venus and Aries can also be fighting for the self in order to bring more harmony to everyone, when Venus is in Aries, there's increased emphasis on things like free speech being heard, very, very relevant right now, and with the, oh, I should have, Oh, I should upload that TikTok to YouTube. But basically, I did a chart about, like, Twitter and Elon and how things do tend, seem like they're ramping up around Twitter's chart. I'm not including that in this video. Then on the 4th to the 5th, the sun is conjunct Uranus and Taurus. The sun is authority. It is leadership, father figures, or masculinity. Uranus is instability or overthrowing things. Uh, this is fairly close to the north node. So suddenness, sudden actions on the part of world leaders is very likely. Sudden, disruptive, spontaneous, uh, future-oriented actions on the part of leaders and people we look up to is very likely. Now for Bitcoin during this time, let me pull up Bitcoin's chart. Bitcoin during the first 10 days or so of May has some nice aspects. However, however, in the grand scheme of things, we are in the bearish moon phase following a new moon into the full moon. So frankly, none of these aspects are going to save Bitcoin. I think that they just show that it's not worst case. We have Venus sextiling Bitcoin's Jupiter. Uh, we then have Mars sextiling Bitcoin's Sun. We have Mercury trining Bitcoin's Mercury. We have the Sun trining Bitcoin's Sun. We have Venus sextiling Bitcoin's Mercury. We have Venus crossing Bitcoin's Moon. We have Venus squaring Bitcoin's Mars. We have Mercury sextiling Bitcoin's moon, and we have the Sun sextiling Bitcoin's Uranus. All positive aspects for the first 10 days of May. However, I do not see them overriding the bearish moon phase that happens after a new moon. I think that the period between eclipses is classically and very substantively very uh, volatile in world events, very surreal. I do not think that these aspects will save Bitcoin. I want to reiterate that, but they're nice, and I think that they show not worst case. Similar for ETH. There are some general nice aspects. Venus is trining Bitcoin Saturn. Mars is trining Bit... Sorry, uh, Ethereum. Mars is sextile Ethereum's Pluto. The Sun is trining Ethereum's Pluto. And Venus, really nicely, is trining ETH's Sun. However, I do not think that this will override the post-eclipse, post-new moon, moon phase that is generally pretty bearish. For Biden, early on, the Pisces planets are all trining his Scorpio stellium, so I do think that he is well supported or things are going well for him early in the month. I did note in the other video that the solar eclipse that happens on April 30th is in a sixth house of illness right on his moon. However, with a lot of fortune there, I think that there's a fortunate event kind of that uh, is well supported. Like even if there's a health scare in private or in public, he's well supported generally to be able to get through that. And for the U.S., very early on Venus is squaring us as Venus uh, this generally shows a bit of uh, this this is helpful for the market and then also Venus is squaring the us as Jupiter early on on the seventh so weird enough as it sounds it looks like there's a bit of help in the us market uh, I don't get how this makes sense because you would think that if the if there's world events in the market I don't get, maybe there's some, the 5th and the 7th, I think maybe we tank, like there's some real issues early on in May, and then by the 5th to the 7th, there's some news of being helped out a little bit. In Putin's chart, uh, let's move forward to the 9th, because he will have Mars trying his natal Uranus, and the Sun conjunct his natal Jupiter. So these are both pretty positive aspects, so I do wonder if on the 9th to the 10th, He's taking with Mars in the 5th house, trining Uranus in the ninth, and with the Sun-Jupiter uh, conjunction in the 7th, that he's taking sudden international actions with another world party. You know, that solar eclipse was in the 7th house of alliances. I think that he could be aligning with another world party pretty substantially, and that there's actions being taken in that direction. For Russia, they will have the Sun trining their natal Uranus, uh, I don't know whether to say they or it when I talk about countries. So I'm just going to say it feels a little bit less personal, more like the entity rather than like citizens. Um, I will say on the 4th, on the 4th, Mars is opposing Russia's 
Jupiter in the eighth house of finances. On the fourth, there could be another round of sanctions, financial implications, things that are financially detrimental look apparent on the fourth. On the fifth, we have Venus squaring Russia's sun. And on the sixth, we have the sun trying Russia's Neptune, which are all generally helpful. However, when I see good aspects in the world, things are falling. When I see good aspects in the world, this does not mean winning the lottery. Generally, things are going well and keeping us afloat. That is why negative or challenging aspects tend to be more important and more dynamic because it's when we hit a road bump that things really show up. When we're on a plane, we don't notice when there's no turbulence. We notice when things are uncomfortable. So me saying that I see some general good things for Russia, not, I'm, not, I'm not even saying this in a political way again. It just happens to be the example. When I see some good things, I don't mean, oh, massive lottery win, phenomenal. I mean, things seem to be staying afloat. Um, however, on the 10th, Mars is then squaring Russia's Mars, which does look challenging on the 10th on a, in a financial sense, again, because this is, Mars is in Russia's 8th house of the, uh, the market. For Zelensky, from the 2nd to the 6th, there's some pretty good aspects for him. Venus is trying his Mars, the Sun is trying his Mercury, Mars is trying his Uranus, uh, it would seem like he has some help, some footing, some assistance early on in the month. However, from the 6th to the 8th, things get pretty intense. The sun will be opposite his Uranus and Mars will be scoring his Neptune. Um, this looks like another prominent world party is diluting him or is being dishonest with Neptune on the descendant. He's very trusting um, and, and can over-idealize or not see the truth in others. That is actually an ongoing theme here in his chart is not just natally, but the, the astrology is betrayal or being deluded or being lied to or having hopes up a lot. So that looks like something that could really, really take place from the 6th to the 8th. And then for Ukraine, actually the astrology isn't that bad. Um, on the 4th, the sun is trying Ukraine's Neptune. On the 5th, Venus is trying Ukraine's Chiron, which is generally very helpful. And then on the, this could be a financial help here with uh, Chiron on the 8th. This could be, uh, yeah, so, like there's financial assistance. And then on the 8th, Mars is trying Ukraine's Pluto. So beginning part of the month, like I said, um, looks like there's major financial implications for Russia that could be a round of sanctions if that solar eclipse was just really, really gnarly with possibly a, a hack, something around, like it just looks really bad. It looks really, really bad on the offensive uh, for that solar eclipse that is technically in April but bleeds into May. So I think that there could be some, uh, both the alliance that I see for Russia possibly taking place and then the financial implications being difficult and then it looks like Ukraine and Zelensky are rec directly receiving assistance is how I would delineate that. Now, middle of the month from the 10th to the 15th, or not middle of the month technically, but leading up to these lunar eclipse from the 10th to the 15th. Firstly, May 10th, Mercury stations retrograde. Don't be scared. Uh, Mercury retrogrades happen all the time. I might do a full video on this. If I'll, I'll, Yeah, I should do a full video on what to expect for this Mercury retrograde. Luckily for Bitcoin, Mercury retrogrades tend to be price action reversals. If we are going down, we tend to go sideways or, or up. If we are going sideways down, we go sideways up. If we're going up, we tend to go down. So the fact that we're probably going down until around the 15th and there's a Mercury retrograde starting on the 10th shows that Mercury retrograde will probably be a price action reversal to the upside because it is the same day that Jupiter enters Aries on the 10th. That is a major, major planetary shift that should be helpful because if I go back to trading view here, the entire period of Jupiter being in Pisces this summer, let me show this, Jupiter in Pisces over the summer is this period here, this literal, literally this down period. Soon as Jupiter enters Pisces in December, this down period. So Jupiter leaving Pisces should be very helpful for the market from May until October during that transit, May 10th to October 28th. And Mercury stationing retrograde indicating a price action reversal let me draw this. Um, doo -doo -doo. If we happen to be like, okay, up until the solar eclipse on the 30th, uh, then like down here, some shit like that. 
that was a really bad drawing, but you get it. Then Mercury retrograde, price action reversal. Maybe we do a little this energy, hypothetically. Could be much worse, could be much lower, because I feel like if we're gonna nuke, we're gonna nuke to like, oh, I don't know. Just, I'm, I'm like drawing out of my ass basically here. But this is the kind of situation where up to new moon, down to round there, and then, yeah. Something like that. We're Mercury retrograde price action reversal alongside Jupiter entering Aries. And there is a lunar eclipse. We will get into that. Um, but back to the astrology, you know, Bitcoin has some other challenging things during this time, frankly, that make me think that we dump into the 10th and then around the 10th to the 15th that we come out of things. So sorry, I should have prefaced with that, uh, that Mercury retrograde and Jupiter and Aries are major planetary shifts. I will have a full video on Jupiter and Aries coming out soon, just waiting on getting that back from my editor. So that should be back soon. Um, but there's some challenging things for Bitcoin leading into that time period. Firstly, Mars conjunct Bitcoin's Uranus on the 10th is downside volatility. Mars is challenging Uranus's volatility. Then from the 12th to the 13th, there's two nice aspects. The sun is trying Bitcoin Saturn, Mercury sextile Bitcoin's moon. However, on the 13th, we also have the sun scoring Bitcoin's Neptune. Meh, not terrible. I don't like it though. But Mars opposite Bitcoin Saturn on the 13th and the 14th, I think is major caution. So even if around the 10th, we start petering out to the side there could be another nuke before we go up after the lunar eclipse on the 15th that's that it's it's mixed on the intraday basis like that uh but then on the 14th venus is square bitcoin sun and that is more helpful for eth on the 12th we have mars conjunct eth's chiron that's not that's that's not good um but then on the 14th we have the sun sextile eth's mars so again looks like even if mercury retrograde starts taking place on the 10th there's like a little bit of a nuke uh or some just some challenge on the 12th to the 13th for the u.s on the 14th which is a day before the lunar eclipse so the 14th is just a day before the lunar eclipse on the 15th lunar eclipse still gnarly still like volatile it's not better than a solar eclipse necessarily um we're leading into, I want to preface this, we're leading into a lunar eclipse. So that day before, I mean, very eclipsy, but still not technically the eclipses I will get into. Um, the, four, the 13th to 14th, we have Mars squaring the U.S. as Mars, and we have Mars opposite the U.S. as Neptune. I do not like this. I do not like this around aggravations with another world leader. We'll just put it at that. That's pretty, pretty, that sums it up. Then for Putin... Venus is opposite his sun on the 14th, so that is generally a helpful aspect. Um, yeah, that's generally helpful. Venus opposite his sun. For Russia, this is also a set of days that's generally filled with some help. Venus is trying Russia's uh, Mercury. The sun is opposite Russia's Venus. Mars is trying Russia's Pluto, and Venus is squaring Russia's Uranus. So, um looks like the kept afloat kind of astrology where it's not like outstanding uh but it's not it's it's not quite as challenging as what i'd be looking at with ukraine's which is it, it is more challenging but ukraine's is actually similar venus is squaring its uranus and neptune during that time so looks like a lot of like just general volatility and activation of suddenness for countries as we lead into the lunar eclipse in Scorpio on the 15th. It is extremely configured in the charts of these political leaders. I mean, with it being at 22 degrees of Scorpio, there's so many charts of political world leaders where this is very, very active in. It deals with letting go of attachment, specifically emotional cords on a more mundane level might be a whistleblower event of things around death, casualties, or behind the scenes, very serious confidential information being unveiled. Saturn at the bending of the nodes still shows that objectivity and logic are the key to staying centered during this however with the mars neptune conjunction showing just like the spread of the spread of aggression and um yeah with with venus chiron conjunct actually i wouldn't be surprised if there's an involvement of women because venus is is women chiron is usually like victims in some way but just the victims of the innocent even with venus chiron uh but it looks like the unveiling of truth the unveiling of something that's been hidden or secret especially around death or confidential information for biden 
this is right on his Scorpio stellium. Um, and it's in his 12th house of mental health or behind the scenes. So uh, with the sun ruling his 9th house, Venus ruling his 6th and 11th, there could be an unveiling of a blind spot regarding people he works with or an alliance he's kept secret with another country, letting go something he's hidden, uh, especially around working with another leader. Um, and with Mercury retrograde on his natal Uranus in the 7th, could be suddenly rethinking communication with or about this partner where Mercury retrograde on Uranus in the 2nd is like, whoa, this is going to get out? Like, like this is coming out? Uh, so this is happening and let it be known, like retrograde it back. The truth is going to come out. Um, and Mars is on his IC, which is very tense around nationality or country and like national identity. So um, yeah, tensions and unveiling of, of something around someone he's working with. For Zelensky, Mars and Neptune in the 10th are trying his natal Jupiter, which is helpful. It looks like he's receiving distinctive help from other parties. We know this. This is happening currently in April. And Jupiter recently entered his 11th house of alliances, which should increase that. Uh, Venus and Chiron is opposite his natal Pluto in the 5th. So I think it shows a challenging test of values, frankly. I think that there's a vulnerability. Um, yeah, it just looks very much like a test of a test of the, the values of people that help him. Like, are these people really going to help him as much as he needs? However, the eclipse itself is gnarly. I mean, it's square his natal midheaven. It's square his moon, his Saturn, his IC. Within in a 6th house, 12th house, as I've said, it looks like the unveiling of possibly a betrayal, that there's more being let go of or hidden. With a letting go in his 6th house of coworkers or illness, I'm looking towards cabinet members potentially that uh, he has to let go of because there was that unveiling of a betrayal. It could be someone he works with that's challenging his loyalty. For Ukraine, this eclipse is right on. On their natal MC I see the MC represents public image or career so when a country's chart public image or something that they're known for this is like a very intense release Saturn is also on their moon um this looks I'm I'm this looks really really rough for Ukraine like this in someone's chart I'd be like they're letting go of a career extreme financial difficulties so in a nation's chart um, and with Mars opposite their natal Mars, like, gee, like, literally Jesus Christ is all I have to say. Like, yeah. Um, third house, ninth house, international matters, ninth house, or Mars in the ninth is really eleventh house, and fourth house, so, like, extreme difficulties with, um, extreme difficulties with people defending the land, literally, looks very, very tough with just, literal land it looks like a very extreme extreme situation for Ukraine for Putin these eclipses and this eclipse in particular is happening in his first house of self which deals with emphasis on an identity it's near his natal Venus which is ruling his seventh house of alliances and his 12th house of hidden behind the scenes even hidden enemies so I think that this will deal more with the alliance, the other party that he is aligning with. Um, when eclipses happen in the first house of a political leader, it is largely like a new, a new, I don't want to say new chapter because that's cliche, but a new role or new title or new understanding of their power. Um, when this has happened in elections for candidates, they usually do win if the other party doesn't have that. But I will say that with this uh, near his natal Jupiter, Jupiter ruling his second house, that this is largely financial and there's a suddenness around finances. It's not easy, don't get me wrong. Like Saturn is on his north node and I see there's obstacles to his ambitions to overtake land. Literally, that's a delineation that I would give here. And Mercury retrograde on his moon in the eighth house of finances with Mercury, uh, with the moon ruling his ninth house of internet. Like there's rethinking how to get around sanctions. There's a lot of financial repercussions around rethinking things but with Venus opposing his Libra stellium that's generally helpful um with the sixth house this has to do with people he works with probably but Mars and Neptune are squaring his natal Mars in the second this is very challenging financially like, like the implications for finance just keep repeating of it being as a challenge in Russia's chart this is right on its natal Venus and Pluto in the fourth house of land ownership nationality Venus Pluto being very very intense uh imposition of value value I would say like Venus just being like trying to impose like Venus Pluto would be I to like imposing um in very intense transformation of that with the south node they're very very intense Venus is ruling its third house and tenth house so there could be 
change in communication from a leader, change in how a leader is seen. I, I don't think I'd feel comfortable saying like, you know, there's any assassination or anything. That's not what I'm seeing. But third house, 10th house, communication from a leader. Jupiter on Russia's midheaven is growth of being seen, growth of what they're known for. I think that yeah, just growth. I mean, midheaven for a country is like what they're 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 known for. What's their identity? And Jupiter there is an expansion of that. So I do wonder if there's like clear um there's there's clear things things for Russia have expanded and that's why and how like Ukraine's astrology looks so so challenging and Russia seems to still challenging, but there's an expansive quality with Jupiter on the midheaven with yeah, yeah, that it's it's a different quality to what's happening here for Bitcoin, um, uh, to, to just go down the list I have here, um, Bitcoin uh, eclipses are generally rough, but this is a full moon, which is a local bottom. I'll show the chart in a second here, but if we just go to Bitcoin, lunar eclipses, full moons are generally bottoms. This is trying Bitcoin Jupiter within just a few minutes, actually, um, this, this eclipse, or sorry, within a few uh, degrees. Then Mars is crossing Bitcoin's Uranus a few days earlier, which is volatility to downside that we should be coming out of. Uh, it's most likely a local bottom that we then come out of. So we nuke into the full moon lunar eclipse. We nuke uh, up out of it. That doesn't make any, I'll show you in a chart for after I show you ETHs basically. Um, for ETH, this is right on its natal Saturn. So this is, that is challenging, but um, just shows like generally hitting support. I'd be like hitting a support level. Mars trine, it's natal Mars is very helpful though. I love seeing this Mars, Mars trine. So if we look at like what full moons generally are on little little trading view here, full moon generally local bottom. So I would uh, imagine that during this, around this lunar eclipse, lunar eclipses are always full moons, you know, goes up from there similar to ETH. Let me see which one is drawn on. Okay, yeah, so... We draw this hypothetically. Let's see how we do this. So we have a little bit of a, oh, I'm on ETH BTC, my bad. I guess all these are drawn on recently, this is fine. So maybe we go up to like here, or there, let's do, let's do a little complacency balance situation. To 30th, we nuke to like here on the 15th. Maybe we maybe we go even lower. I actually yeah we're gonna we're gonna go lower just for the and then back up around that. That's how I would possibly stylize that. Even though the dates are off, it should be like this on the fifteenth. And maybe we get a little bit of like this. I totally fucked that up. <laughs> you get you get the point though. Uh, going back to the general astrology, middle of May, um, basically recovering from the eclipse. So from the 15th to the 16th in just the general astrology, we will have the sun in Taurus squaring Saturn. The sun being authority, creativity, ego, uh, leadership, and Saturn being obstacles or things in the way shows that there's likely going to be stalemates between leaders following the eclipse, possibly trying to like quickly get some kind of agreement and sun Saturn is like, hell no, that's not happening. From the 17th to the 18th, Mars will conjoin Neptune exactly. Mars is the fighter, Neptune is spirituality. This looks like widespread, fighting of something that is widespread. I, I didn't even know that there were political news discussions about biolabs or whatever, but frankly, with a lot of Pisces and Mars, Neptune, I worry. Um, or just um, lack of direct fighting, it is more the spread of things that permeate. For Bitcoin during this time, like I said, probably a bit of a local bottom. I also like that Mercury is trying Bitcoin's Mercury on the 17th. The Sun is trying Bitcoin's Jupiter on the 20th. Venus is sextile Bitcoin's Neptune on the 21st. Mercury is trying Bitcoin's Jupiter on the 23rd. Um, and then the Sun is trying Bitcoin's Mercury on the 23rd as well. Similar for ETH, I actually like some of these daily things. The Sun is trying ETH's Moon on the 16th. Mars is trying ETH's Mars on the 16th. The Sun is score ETH's Jupiter on the 18th. Mars is sextile Ethereum's Moon on the 18th. I will say on the 19th, 
the sun will oppose ETH Saturn, so a little bit less good on the 19th, but not terrible. Uh, the 20th, Venus is conjoining Ethereum's Uranus. This is very strong upside volatility, in my opinion. The 21st has the sun square Ethereum's Venus. 22nd has Mercury squaring Ethereum's Venus. Uh, 22nd also has Mars trying ETH Saturn. I like that a lot. The 23rd has Venus squaring ETH's Mars, and the 24th has Venus squaring ETH's Moon. I really like that from, I mean, basically for all these, I'm looking at the 26th through the 24th. I like what I'm seeing for a bit of market recovery. Jupiter's now in Aries, and that is much more helpful as well for the general market, or I just predict that it will be. I think it'll be an emphasis on like individual finance, and that'll get people more interested. For Putin, um, first thing on the 17th, Mercury will conjoin Putin's Moon. So that look, that could be a strong announcement about something financial, especially internationally. A strong financial international announcement on the 17th. Venus is also opposite his Saturn, um, and this is happening in the houses around people he works with and behind the scenes, so I think that there could be new someone new that he works with that's doing something. Um, the 18th, Venus is squaring his Uranus, so that's also generally helpful. However, on the 20th, Mars is squaring his natal Mars. This is again in financial houses, so this looks like a strong financial difficulty around the 20th. Uh, Venus is opposite his Neptune that day, which is decent. The 22nd has Venus opposite as Mercury, um, more announcements, more news. And on the 23rd, the sun is conjunct his moon, which is generally helpful. This is kind of the keeping afloat aspects that I've spoken about. In Zelensky's chart, um, looks a little bit strange, frankly. On the 17th, Venus is opposite his Pluto. So that's a little bit neutral, but generally shows very deep values needing to be demonstrated. So alliances could show their deep support. I think that following this, the lunar eclipse, there will be a need for support. So I think alliances are showing some deep support. Venus is also trying his Neptune, and Venus is trying his moon. So the 17th, frankly, looks like a very interesting, very supportive day for Zelensky. The 19th has the sun squaring his Saturn. Mech, not the best. However, on the 20th, with Mars squaring his natal Jupiter, that is a little bit rough. So the 20th for multiple parties here looks uh, fairly difficult. Then for Ukraine, on the 16th, the sun is squaring its Jupiter, and that's decent, that's neutral. However, on the 18th, Mars is opposite Ukraine's Mars. This is very challenging. This Mars-Neptune conjunction happening exactly opposite Ukraine-Mars looks extremely challenging on the, tw on the 18th as well. I mean, just like Jesus Christ, like Jesus. It's just like if you had to put a chart together that would be challengingly activated by the current astrology, you would, you would, you would form Ukraines. And I say this as someone with very similar astrology, very similar. I mean, seven years later, down to almost the minute. So I speak. I'm also not that I'm, you know, uh, to the level of of what they're like. Yeah, I'm not going to get into it, but very, very challenge i'm look at this mars neptune opposite their natal mars in the third night that looks that looks very very challenging on the 18th um but that that's yeah that's what i i don't know what i'm I, i'm bad at endings i'm very bad at endings i just irish eggs different parties i never know i'm just gonna if you know me you know i end zoom calls with no ending i just literally cut it i'm like bye um then we get into the home stretch from the 24 onward so the 24th has mars entering aries hallelujah Mars is at home in Aries. Mars is the fighter. Aries is its home sign along with Scorpio. But Mars and Aries is like, we just get the machete out and we get shit done. Like, there's no time for deliberation. There's no time. Mars and Aries is just like thankful masculine energy of like, we go forward, we fucking do it. On the 26th to the 27th, however, I will say Venus squaring Pluto is very manipulative, especially for relationships. This could be supply line censorship, direct value issues. Like supply line could be a major issue, as could uh, free speech and censorship. Looks major, major difficulty around the 26th to 27th. However, 28th, Venus enters Taurus. Venus is in its home sign. Mars is in its home sign. That Hallelujah. There's a period also. Let me see what day this comes up, actually. Or no, it'll be later in June. But there's there's a time in June when Mars, Venus, and Mercury are all on their home signs. And maybe even, maybe even the sun, no, I'm not, no, I think, maybe the moon, maybe the moon when it's in Cancer. Anyway, I like seeing Venus in its own sign. I like seeing Mars in its own sign. Thank God we are getting some solutions actively done, even if shit still is really bad. Don't get me wrong. 
From the 29th to the 30th, Mars is conjunct Jupiter. Mars is action and aggression, and Jupiter is growth. So I think this looks like the growth of the growth of taking action. Like there is shit actually being done. There's no like back and forth, like oh sanction. Like no shit is getting done. Looks like some tangible shit. Um, on the let's go to Bitcoin. Let's get Bitcoin chart. We're in the home stretch, guys. So gonna get through this. On the 24th for Bitcoin, Mars is sextile Bitcoin's Jupiter. I like it. 25th, the sun is sextile Bitcoin's moon. I like it. However, on the 26th, I will say that Mars is squaring Bitcoin's Pluto. That looks gnarly. That looks challenging on the 26th. Um, so yeah, caution. And I'd say around the Venus-Pluto square happening in the general charts, looks like there could be some world events around value, censorship, discrimination, something that are just like, like yeah. Uh, not good on the 28th however we get back to business venus is squaring bitcoin's jupiter mars is sextiling bitcoin's mercury venus is sextiling bitcoin's venus and on the 29th venus is trying bitcoin's pluto the 30th venus is squaring bitcoin's mercury however on the 30th as well mars is conjunct bitcoin's moon this looks gnarly and it is also uh it is also a new moon in gemini on the 30th and new moons are local tops and we tend to dump after so the 30th major caution for a dump i mean mars crossing bitcoin's moon like textbook just uh, yeah i'm short for eth um as always similar so I like Venus squaring Ethereum's moon on the 24th. However, on the 26th, Mercury opposing Bitcoin Saturn looks like FUD, looks like challenging news, looks like the news and things in the media are just challenging. On the 26th, uh, however, after that, we then have Venus trying ETH's Jupiter. On the 27th, we have Mercury trying ETH's Jupiter. And on the 28th, we have Venus trying ETH's Venus. These are all much more helpful. However, on the 30th, we then have the Sun squaring ETH's Neptune. That is also just not good. And that's the day of a new moon. So not too good. Generally, we dump after new moons. For the U.S., I will say as well that on the 26th, which just looks like a gnarly day overall, Mars is conjunct the U the United States' midheaven, or uh, I'm sorry, Mars is conjunct the United States' icy, um, which is around home, land, property, nationality. That just looks like yuck. Just, oh, I really don't, like, this is bad on all accounts on the 26th, so that's not a fun day. On the 29th, if we go to Russia's chart, Mars will be squaring Russia's sun. So that's also challenging to close the month out on the 29th for Russia. Um, then for Zelensky, actually, there's some help, it seems, for some of that, for a lot of that part of the month. Um, the sun is trying his sun. Sun is trying his Venus. Venus is trying his Saturn. Venus is trying his Mars. Venus is conjunct his Chiron. So looks like he gets some help. Like he gets some, he is being helped out, especially by like behind the scenes, people are coming in and really helping him out. Like with all that, uh, that happening there. I, I didn't really mention Putin because it's not quite as active in his chart during this time in comparison. And then for Ukraine's chart, similarly, there's a lot of help, it seems. Um... Venus is trying Ukraine's Jupiter. Venus is trying Ukraine's Mercury. Venus is trying Ukraine's Venus. Then when Venus enters Taurus, it trines Ukraine's Sun, trines its Saturn. So it looks like major supportive help coming towards uh, Zelensky and Ukraine end of the month, which we then end with a new moon in Gemini. It's a pretty textbook, intellectual, curious new beginning, and it is, uh, yeah, very active. This is the last part, guys, very active in uh, all these charts, but... First, I mean, um, we can get into the, I'll have a full video on this coming out also. It's just, a, it's a new beginning in Gemini. So it's like buzzy. I'm obsessed with learning about this new beginning for people. And then in the world, it's usually like an intellectual data-driven new beginning. In the U.S.'s chart, this is right on its descendant. The descendant in a country's chart deals with another world power, often an alliance, or in inside the country, civil partisan issues. I'll repeat that in case anyone, you know, wants to remember that. The seventh house in a country's chart generally refers to other parties and alliances with world powers, 
or infighting in the country on a civil or partisan level. So very close to the U.S.'s natal Uranus, this looks like a very sudden new partnership um, or alliance. Also could be sudden civil instability, frankly. With Saturn still near the U.S.'s moon, this is uh, economically not the best, but it's a very curious, very weird new partnership that could come out of nowhere, basically. And given, not out of nowhere where it's unpredictable, but out of nowhere where it's literally just not what people are thinking of. For Biden's chart, because he has the same Sagittarius rising, this is also in his seventh house. And it is exactly by degree on his Saturn, which rules his second house of finances and his third house of news and information. So there could be a new partnership in the news around financial matters where he aligns with another world party, possibly uh, in the U.S. government or in a, just externally. Uh, Saturn tends to be very substantial and serious, so this isn't like anything frivolous. Um, Venus is on his moon in the sixth house, and the moon is ruling his eighth house of the market, so it looks like this could be, again, some kind of a financial tie. Um, trade-based partnership could be a, with the sixth house, and the moon, the moon is often transit, so this could be a trade-based partnership. I wish I had someone that just went through my videos and could, like, easily identify when I make calls correctly, because this seems like one that could definitely play. It could be a trade-based partnership. Because of shit going on in the world, we need to, like, execute trade, maybe oil, things like that. This is an alliance that Biden initiates uh, based on trade. For Bitcoin, uh, new moons are generally local tops. We know this, so we generally dump after. Mars and Jupiter is exactly on Bitcoin's moon. Mars is challenging. Jupiter is nice, so could definitely be a pump into and dump out of this new moon. I like that it's trying Bitcoin's Pluto uh, and things like that, but like um, Venus, I mean, I, I like that Venus is newly trying Bitcoin's Pluto, but that was like a day ago. So I think we pump into this new moon and then dump out. For Ethereum, this is sextile East Natal Sun. Uh, Venus is trying East Natal Venus. Uh, but yeah, probably pump into and dump out of, as usual, with new moons. So we end the month on that kind of a note. And we did it before the sun is setting. So if you enjoy this and this video, do make sure that you comment anything down below. Also, like, I would kind of, I don't know, might put out an open call for this. If anyone is, if anyone is uh, an archivist or has a background or a skill set that would work well towards taking what I do in my videos, documenting when things are correct or when they're blatantly wrong as well, and keeping note of that, that would save me a lot of fucking time. If I could have someone to help me out with my calls and my news, because I, I, I just cannot keep track and I would love to have a way to like I said, keep track of my calls, maybe an archivist or some kind of help with that, that would be great. So um, maybe DM me on Instagram. That's the best way for me to read it because I read all of that shit even if I don't respond because there's too many. But anyway, we'll see you soon in further videos. If you have not already seen your May forecast for your rising sign, check those out below. This video is long as fuck and it's getting late. So I'll see you uh, soon. Fucking NYC ambulance ending this video like this.